Welcome back to the GTN show. This week in the world of triathlon, we have an elite ITU star banned with a doping violation, a coronavirus vaccine for the Olympic Games, and Flora Duffy out with injury again, and also struggling with some US travel issues, as well as a swanky new Canyon Speedmax bike and a Wahoo watch release. Right, let's start with the try news and unfortunately with a relatively negative story because who would have thought in a year of basically zero racing we would be talking about an athlete trying to get a competitive edge by doping. And yeah, unfortunately, it's not just any old athlete either. It's an ITU elite triathlete by the name of Ben Shaw. You may recognize his name, particularly from Super League Triathlon Series, where he was quite aggressive. We saw him attacking on the swim and the bike sections, including quite a big crash at one point that got a lot of airtime. But anyway, Ben represents Ireland, although he was born in Australia and has been living in Australia since. He's currently ranked 327th in the ITU standings, and he was detected for the substance Ligand which was taken during an outer competition test on the 22nd of July. Now, Ligandrol, from my understanding, is more commonly used for cancer patients or older citizens that may be struggling with muscle loss and wastage. So essentially, Ligandrol helps to build muscle and repair more quickly. Similar to steroids, but without the side effects from my understanding. Now apparently Ben was unable to provide Triathlon Island and Sport Island with an explanation as to how that substance was found in his system and declined to exercise his right to a hearing. As a result, he's been banned for four years and has decided to retire from the sport. Well now, moving on, and I'm sure many of you have been eagerly monitoring the news in regards to a vaccine for coronavirus. We recently heard from Pfizer and BioNTech that their initial analysis showed that their vaccine could prevent coronavirus with more than 90% of people. Of course, this is ongoing, there's still plenty more to be done there. But interestingly, Thomas Back, the president of the International Olympic Committee, has already begun looking into seeking to source a supply of doses or the vaccine doses to ensure the safe staging the Tokyo Games in 2021. Now, should the Olympic Games go ahead in 2021, and I really do hope they do, it would be the biggest international event since the beginning of the pandemic. So, of course, they really want to make sure that it's safe and so that it can go ahead. They have stressed, however, that the most vulnerable should take priority beforehand. Well, as we're talking of 2021 and we start looking forward to the events of next year, one of the most prestigious triathlon events, the Malibu Triathlon, has just been acquired by Super League Triathlon as they set to establish themselves in the US. Now, the Malibu Triathlon is a very old event. I think it's been running since the late 1980s. Always attracted a stellar lineup, tons of world-class athletes, as well as Hollywood stars. We've had the likes of Zac Efron, Tom Cruise, James Marsden, even Jennifer Lopez all taking part in this event. Now, more details are still yet to come, due to come early in 2021 as to how that event will take place. But I think it's fair to say with the Super League's involvement, you can expect some pretty fierce and aggressive racing. Well, moving on, and just as her season got going, it has come to a rather sudden and quick end for Flora Duffy, and almost one race too soon. After her very impressive win at the Arsacana World Cup just last month, she was the hot contender for the Valencia World Cup just last weekend, but she was a no-show. Unfortunately, it turns out that she's been struggling with a right knee pain due to two cysts that have been putting pressure on and around that knee. And from the sound of things, more or less came on just out of the blue. One minute she was feeling really strong in training, feeling really good in the lead up to this race, and then this. Unfortunately as well, this is not the only difficulty and thing that she's having to deal with at the moment because she's still awaiting clearance so that she can fly back into the US, and particularly for that PTO race, Challenge Daytona, which is due to take place on the 6th of December. I've got to say, I was really looking forward to watching Flora race there, so fingers crossed to you, Flora. And finally though, a quick hats off to Daniel Cox. He's organized his own Ironman that he completed in 10 hours, but in doing so, he raised a staggering $78,000 for Be The Match, an organization that matches bone marrow donors with cancer patient, patients in need of a transplant. So yeah, congratulations, Daniel. That is a heck of achievement. 
Of course, we can't forget to talk about the Zwift Triathlon Academy. Hopefully, all of you guys are getting involved or enjoying it too. I have as well. And I've got to say, some of those sessions are pretty cheeky. They start off nice and steady, but boy, don't take you by surprise. But I've really enjoyed it and it's just a little bit different for this time of year. Now we're about three weeks in and we've got up until the 23rd of December to complete five bike workouts, five run workouts, as well as one bike TT and one run TT. Now, if you would like a little bit of motivation and some help maybe with planning your training, Heather has gone and caught up with the session designer and coach, Dan, please. All right, so we're probably, we've got about five weeks left to go when the, the show goes out. And I expect people are about halfway through at this stage and they're probably navigating their sessions. How, um, have you got any advice on how to be structuring the rest of your training around these Zwift Academy sessions? Yeah, well, the, the, certainly, I mean, now we're, most people have done the kind of easier sessions already by now, I would expect. So now we're definitely getting into the more higher intensity sessions that are at the end of the program. So, I mean, my, my feeling is that you can really only fit in two high intensity sessions per week. So if you're doing a bike and a run, that's pretty much your, your, your quota of high intensity sessions for the week. So the rest of your training should really, I would just fit it around with some more aerobic, kind of below that first aerobic threshold, but basic endurance sessions. So as we're moving through, are there any sessions that require more preparation or more rest ahead of them that we've got coming up? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like. You know, as the, the sessions, they, they're graded pretty much by intensity, really. So you start off with the lower intensity work and they're definitely the easiest because the duration is quite short. And then by the time you get to session five of the run and session five of the bike, they're definitely the hardest sessions that are in the Swift Academy. And they're designed that way because you know, hopefully you get a bit fitter as you go through. So those sessions, you definitely want to have at least 48 hours of pretty easy like aerobic training before that. Certainly no high intensity, certainly no kind of work that's that's gonna really um, deplete you that little bit. So you definitely want to arrive for those sessions pretty well rested and definitely motivated to um, to get stuck in. If you're not feeling like you don't want to push yourself on that day, then I would save it for another day. Very wise. And now, I know we're still a few weeks off from coming to the end of the program, but I think a lot of people might have got on this early and got through lots of sessions and starting to just think about the races, so we've got the, you know, the two time trials. What advice can you give people now as they're starting to sort of make their plans and look, look towards that? Yeah, I mean, it depends on how seriously you're taking those time trials. You know, if, you, if you're really go, going for that as well as the academy place, then I would be going at it and approaching it like I was going to have a race and I'd be doing a pretty specific taper around it, really. You know, we know that all tapers are between, the best ones are between seven days and 14 days, I and mean, there's a bit of individual variation. But you know, looking at having something progressive, being fresh before, and certainly even the day before, looking at doing some kind of you know mobilization and some priming just to get you in the best shape. So if you've got any typical taper that works for you that you do when you race, I would be using a very similar approach to when I approach the, those time trials as well. And also I think what's really important is warming up for those is really, really important. Don't just go, okay, I'm jumping on the start line and off your guard. I'd get on, give yourself a good hour before the race, do a good warm up, do a specific warm up for the what you're trying to do and then be ready and ready to go so you can kick right into it. Yeah, and I think like you say, some people are going for the academy, but a lot of people are just trying to get personal bests as well. So Yeah, exactly. And if you and if personal best is your thing, it's just as important, right? And I think you still want the same approach. But you're not going to do a personal best if you're too fatigued for sure. Fitness versus freshness is really important. And then um, and then also getting a good warm-up and a good bit of um, good bit of a stimulus before you actually approach the session. Great. That's making me feel nervous just talking about racing in that way. <laughs> in a good yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, it's good to get it. It's good to get a bit of nerves. It'll um, get, get the best out of you for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the, those great insights. Thanks, Dan. Tech news time, and we are certainly not going to disappoint you this week because we have two huge releases, both of which, in fact, are on our channel and were released just yesterday. First up, though, we have the Canyon Speedmax. So here it is, the brand new Canyon Speedmax. And the model I'm crouched beside right now, and you would have seen a lot of in the video just now, is the top of the range CFR, standing for Canyon Factory Racing. Below that we have the CF SLX, and then we have the CF, which you can see behind me right now. 
That brings us three main models, but obviously within that we have different spec build, bringing together a total lineup of 11 bike options from the Speedmax range, ranging from fully fledged pro setups all the way down to builds with Shimano 105. Now we've just heard a snapshot of the successes of the Speedmax in recent years, so the big question you're probably asking is how can you make such a successful bike even better and even faster? Well, one of the keys to this was wind tunnel testing, obviously, but not just for testing the bike, also how the rider's legs interact with the airflow over and around the bike. Now, rather than tirelessly using an athlete over and over again for this, Canyon went to the extent of actually creating, very cleverly, a set of carbon fiber spinning dummy legs so that they could test over and over and over again, as many times as they like, and the end result was a staggering eight watts saving with the dummy legs and nine watts without. Wow. I mean, I've got to say, it's honestly not what I expected. With the last Speedmax being so popular, so fast, I genuinely just expected more or less the same bike just with the addition of disc brakes. But they have totally redesigned it, taking things to the next level. And I love it. I really do. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you haven't done so already, do make sure you check out our live launch yesterday. You can watch it back at any time you like and see that bike in detail, as well as with the Canyon HQ with the experts and Jan Frodeno talking through some of the reasons why they changed those bits. Next up though, we have this from Wahoo. It's the Wahoo Element Rival GPS Sports Watch. I also have my wrist here now. It's been rumored in the pipeline for some time now, but I am excited to finally be wearing it. Well, not only are they very fancy looking watches, they also pack a ton of features, namely for us triathletes, because this is really cool, it's got this automated handover function from the Element Rival watch to a Wahoo Element bike computer. So what this means, so when we're swimming in a triathlon, it will be recording all our data on the Rival watch. As we exit the swim, it will start our T1 time automatically. As we approach our bike and the bike computer, it will automatically hand over from the watch to the bike computer. Without the press of a button, you'll start seeing all that data appear on the bike computer. So that includes your T1 time. So as you exit T1, you'll see that time appear and then continue on the bike recording all that data. As you come into T2, the same will happen in reverse. It will transfer all that data over onto the watch without the press of a button and off you go. Sprinting away on the run and you can continue timing your triathlon, seeing your T2 time and all. Pretty darn neat. Of course, there's a ton of other features packed into it, but a couple of key details that most people are interested in when it comes to sports watches. Um, battery life, it has a 14 day smartwatch battery life and then a 24 hour GPS battery life, which I think is plenty for most people. Uh, retails at $379.99 US dollars and $349.99 British pounds. But don't forget you can check out our unboxing that came out just yesterday on the channel to find out some more details and also your chance to win one of three watches. We're now for the race news, but we're back with some virtual racing. However, this time, with a twist. Zwift are back with their Zeb Pro Tri-Series for three weeks, but the athletes must complete three races in the space of just a couple of hours. So we've got 20 select pro men and women racing over a points race, scratch race, and an individual hill climb TT all one after the other, alternated between male and female. So it really is fast and furious. In the men's race last week, we had a last minute withdrawal from Johnny Brownlee, allowing none other than Lionel Sanders to take that spot, which I'm sure panicked quite a few of the other male who, competitors who assumed he wouldn't be there for once. He didn't manage to take the win in that first race. I think he finished around fifth place, but collected enough points to put himself in second on the standings with Anthony Costas 
in the lead. The second race, Lionel managed to take the win, bumping himself into pole position, meaning it really came down to that final race, the individual hill climb TT, which was quite interesting actually, because Zwift can just turn off drafting. So unlike normal individual TTs, where you'd have to set off a minute apart, everyone set off together so we could have those duels between one another, but no one was able to draft upon another. And we really saw a fantastic battle between Lionel Sanders and Anthony Costas. Anthony managed to edge ahead and take the win, which actually meant in the final standings, Lionel and Anthony drew. And then James Kunemar rounded out the podium in third. On the women's side, it was Paula Finlay that took an early win with Emma Pallant very close behind. In the next race, it seemed like Imogen Simmons really figured out her Zwift racing tactics and jumped up in the rankings with a very impressive sprint to second. Amelia Watkinson taking the win there, leaving a close race between Amelia and Emma going into that final race. However, Amelia had to to settle for seventh place. Emma for 10th, Melanie Mora taking the win. Fortunately for Emma though, it was enough just to hold on that victory overall. Melanie Mora taking second and Emily Watkinson third. We also had a couple of big races that were supported by the PTO over the weekend with significant prize purses, one of which was the Harvey Bay 100. That was won by Amelia Watkinson on the women's side, Barbara Veros in second and Ellie Salthouse in third. Steve McKenna, won the men's race, Simon Hearn in second and then Caleb Noble in third. We also had the People's Triathlon over in Port Elizabeth in South Africa on parts of the 70.3 World Championship course from a couple of years ago. That was won by Emma Pallant in the women's race, Anna Watkinson in second and Jade Nicole in third. In the men's race we had a very exciting battle between Matt Troutman, Carl Buckingham and James Kunemar. James Kunemar and Matt Troutman managed to edge ahead and drop Kyle later into the run and really leaving this exciting battle between the two of them. James managed to edge ahead to take that win, Matt Troutman settling for second and Kyle Buckingham in third. We also have a very exciting close to the World Triathlon rankings for this year. Of course, it was a very condensed season with far fewer races than usual, but it provided a very frantic Russian race for as many points as possible in that final Valencia World Cup just a couple of weeks ago. In fact, it was a tie on the women's side. Georgia Taylor-Brown and Flora Duffery with 1,925 points apiece. Um, it was Katie Severis rounding out the pod podium, notably Beth Potter jumping up to fifth after her impressive performances in the last couple of World Cup events. On the men's side, Von St. Louis has a commanding lead with 2,000 points. Heli Geens taking second with 1,647. And then impressively, Alistair Brownlee rounding out the podium in third with a last minute surge of racing towards the end of the season. Right now, time to take a look through all your photos that you've been sending in to us. And we've had actually a ton of you guys getting up to some exciting stuff, racing and events, um, doing little adventures lately. This first one from Sean from Lake Conroe said his first race of 2020, the Oilman 70.3 triathlon. He said masks were required up to the swim start and also through transition. And this photo apparently was taken as he was queuing for the swim start. Um, he said he was just happy for the chance to race and it was a brilliant day. Well, congratulations to you and that does look like like a blimmin' nice place to race. Um, next up from Tom, and um, this is his Ribble Ultra Tri TT bike. Um, he says, just finished a 17 kilometer TT race on Zwift. And he said, he actually had to take the photo through the shed window to get the whole bike in. I know how that feels. That is some extremely long extensions. I mean, they are huge. Um, yeah, um, but anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Dave uh, from Gilroy in California, he said, um, this is my hole. Um, he says everyone calls it a pain cave. He said he calls this a hole because when you look through a cave, it's dark. When you look through a hole, there's a new world out the other side. Um, very deep, um, but no, I love it. Uh, mine took me from the couch two years ago to I'm a 70.3 Santa Cruz in 2019. Now it's taking me not only back to Santa Cruz, but I'm in California in 2021. Well, that's very cool. And you've got the full setup there, even a fridge with cold water ready to go straight after a session or during a session. Um, now next up from Brock, and this is from um, Mount St. Helier in Quebec, and uh, said, clearing the mind, trying to find ways to get my bot, my book sold, which is called My Co-Workers Think I'm a Pro. Well, that's a very clever way of advertising your book. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to give that a Google now, but a very nice photo too. As always, do keep sending in your photos, any videos using the photo uploader link that's on screen right now. you find it in the description as well. But yeah, please do send in any pain caves, things you've been getting up to, challenges, anything you like. 
And finally, the caption competition. Last week we had this photo from the Valencia World Cup. Tons of captions coming in from you guys. Uh, picked out a handful of the best picks, in my opinion. Uh, Zaizo Herdler, I think that's how I pronounce it, said, Mira Mira on the wall. Who's the fastest of them all? Very good. Luke Oren said, uh, Racing my own reflection is the closest to competing we can get to. Keeps it a close race, at all times at least. Very good. Uh, Michael Davis, after reflecting on 2020, 2021 looks bright. Uh, the winner, though, is Gareth Mills, said, Racing and training has been flipped on its head in 2020. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong there. Pretty much just to the point there, Gareth. And yeah, you are the winner. Uh, do get in touch and we'll ping a cap out to you ASAP. But for this week's caption comp photo, it's of this very well timed and framed photo. Uh, I believe it's from the Tonic Triathlon. So yeah, get involved, leave your captions in the comments section down below. But that is the end of the show this week. We have tons coming up on the channel. We are actually going to be following Joe Skipper taking part in the Z Pro Tri Series this week. So check that video out coming this weekend. We're also getting involved in a little bit of an elevation gain competition just between Heather and myself having a bit of fun there. Uh, don't forget you can find our GTN shop. It's on the screen or a link somewhere right now. You can get hold of some of our GTN merch. Don't also forget to give this show a like. Give us a little subscribe just down below or follow us over on our social media channels. We also have loads of videos already on the channel. We had that Canyon Speedmax launch that went out just yesterday along with the Wahoo unboxing. Don't forget to go and check them out and maybe get involved in that Wahoo unboxing competition too.